We're making pizza, we're crafting pizza today, a super cheesy pizza on top of a crispy crunchy crust. Made crispy and crunchy from using a cast iron pan in a very hot oven. And you're in luck because this recipe is stolen, uh, borrowed, definitely borrowed, definitely borrowed, borrowed from King Arthur. The dough for the pizza crust is made with only four ingredients. As water count, because if water counts, then there's definitely five ingredients. Okay, five ingredients. Let's get started with the dough. A large enough mixing bowl will help make mixing easier. Let's get moving. This water, three quarters of a cup, is only the perfect temperature for just a moment. Perfect temp of 100. Warm, very warm, but not hot, not hot. Pizza dough needs yeast, just a half a teaspoon. Don't use a full packet. Active dry, instant, doesn't really matter. A cheap kitchen scale that measures in grams is a life saver or a time saver. Pizza dough needs flour, and that would be this flour. All purpose, bread flour, or combo, doesn't really matter. This recipe is flexible. No scooping, no leveling, just piling the ingredient until it hits its target weight. Simple. A little bit of salt, half a teaspoon. Wanna use your scale? Hey Google, how much does a half a teaspoon of salt weigh? Olive oil, extra virgin, exactly approximately one tablespoon. Stir this around and around and around. Then when the spoon isn't working so well, switch to your fingers. Squeeze the dough together so you end up with one cohesive clump. Work in all the flour bits. This is quick, should take less than a minute. It's one ugly clump of a clump. All's good, no worries. Plastic wrap. That was cool. Want to see it again? Cover the bowl, wait five minutes, uh, tap your fingers, passes time. After the five, the dough will have begun to hydrate. Hydrate, that means like get wet. Now we want to stretch the dough. It's much more relaxed. Pull it out gently to about twice its length, then fold it over onto itself. Do a quarter turn, stretch it out, fold it over onto itself. Sticky, flour your fingers. A little extra flour won't hurt. Quarter turn, stretch, fold. And again, quarter turn, stretch, fold. Stretch, fold. Cover up, five minutes, idle hands. Fast five minutes. Stretch, fold, quarter turn. Stretch, fold, quarter turn, four times. Cover, wait another five. Do the four stretches. That's a total of four times of four stretches each. Cover one more time and let the dough rest 45 minutes. The dough is now fully hydrated and bounces back, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. We have a decision to make. Were you a planner? The dough will be so much better letting it rest in the fridge overnight, or even letting it rest for a couple days. But if you're impatient, you'll still end up with a pretty good crust. You can make a pizza now. Overnight, with a slow proof, a gentle rise in the cold fridge, the dough will have developed a much more complex flavor. Something magical happens overnight. Uh, we need our pan. Well seasoned. Better than nonstick because this can be used in the oven as well over high heat on a stovetop. Smooth as butter. 
splash in three or four tablespoons of oil. Swirl it around. Use your fingers. We need this to be well lubed. Hit the edge. Hit the sides. Dough into the pan after stretching it a bit. Coax it out to the edges, but don't let it tear. Flip to oil the other side. If it shrinks back, let it rest 10 or 15 minutes. This time will allow the gluten to relax a bit. Much more relaxed and easier to work. We don't want to stress our dough. Push it to the edges. One long last rest for the dough to let it do a real rise, about two hours. Any longer than that and you'll end up with dough that's too puffy and too cloud-like. Each of those big bubbles is more likely to burn. A full half hour before this last rise is finished, put an oven rack on the lowest level in the oven and preheat your oven to hot 450 degrees. A lot of people may not realize this, but 450 degrees is actually 100 degrees more than 350. After two hours, the dough has swollen significantly. Smells very yeasty. Yeasty. Is that a word? It smells of yeast. We're going to cover our dough with two cheeses and sauce. Freshly grated mozzarella. Pretty traditional. Use a larger size grater. No need to waste your time with a fine grate. We want to cover the entire dough, edge to edge. This could be embarrassing if I can't open this. Our sauce. Be stingy here. Spread it as thinly as you can. Probably a little pushback on me. Rather than making my own, I've been lucky enough to find a local brand that's really good. Just tomatoes, olive oil, onion, garlic, salt, basil, and spices. Just the good spices. If you do purchase sauce or make your own, avoid anything that's too watery. If you want more bite to your pizza, rather than more sauce, finely dice some tomatoes and toss them on. When you make this pizza, if you want more sauce, add more sauce. It's all yours. More cheese? Go for it. Slice provolone. Pretty traditional. I barely cover the sauce with this. One layer, pretty much. No sauce showing, not, not sure why, but no sauce showing. And a little more mozz. I grated it, I'll use it. Probably should have put this in a bowl. Okay, enough. W well, one more. Bottom shelf, 18 minutes or until the top is bubbly. Loosen the edges, if needed. Check the bottom. You're aiming for a crispy bottom. A little too blonde here, so onto the burner. It's cast iron in already 450 degrees, so go pretty high, but keep a check on it. Just a couple minutes and we've reached our deep brown. Maximum crispiness. The pizza should just slide right out. And by the way, this pan will burn the dickens out of you. Careful. Kitchen shears, the latest internet craze to cut thick pizza. Y you might want to let the pizza cool a bit before cutting. Look at this steaming slice. Nice and thick crust air. Uh, let's try that again. Nice and thick crust, airy, hot. Did, did I mention hot? And a plate, hold that. A plate. A cheese gob. 
a nice and brown bottom, and a hot slice of pizza. Goodbye, roof of my mouth. This pizza is a real winner. Full recipe in the YouTube description down below and on sweetspotkitchen.com. If you're not a subscriber, now is the perfect time to subscribe. Click on the subscribe button down below. Until next time, this is it for Sweet Spot.